Welcome to season two of Fresh Off the Boat. My name is Arjun Seth. I'm the founder director of Edbrand and CollegeFair.live. I'm with Kartikesh Sharma, Jadu, as we all call him uh, at our office. Um, it was really magical to know that, you know, you'd made such interesting moves during high school years and then um, <laughs> ended up at Berkeley, uh, very well deserved. And why don't you introduce yourself, Kartikeh, and we'll take it from there. Um. Pretty much, I'm Karthike, um, went to UWC Mostar for high school, and now I'm here, Berkeley, kind of switching between physics and CS, doing a little bit of everything, it's going with the flow. Great. I was, uh, before this session, I was going over your short bio, and it seems that, like many Berkeley students, you're not just involved in the classroom, there's so much else going mm -hmm. on, and we'll cover that. Yeah. Um, so how was it like? just settling in uh, at Berkeley and getting that feeling that, you know, wow, I'm in one of the finest large public universities in the world. <laughs> it was really good. It was really, it's a new high, you know, just being at a place of where you feel like you can, you know, go all out. Once you find out, you know, yo, this is what I want to do. There are resources there to just propel you into, you know, doing whatever you want. It's really freeing. Awesome. So, uh, of course, uh, you know, first few weeks that people settle in, get um, in, get to an adjusting phase. But you probably done most of that college transition thing being yeah. a WC student. So what was 100%. new for you? So what was new for you while settling in? I think uh, the new stuff was probably just America related and not as much like, you know, student experience related. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like a lot of responsibilities like. I honestly feel like I, you know, used to worry about those things more in Mostar than in America. But uh, it's more of just like getting used to the environment, the work culture, and just kind of gauge what's expected of you, you know? Great. So I think that kind of is interesting because you then dive straight into your academic workload and workload at Berkeley is supposed to be quite legendary. But students it can is, have their own yeah. mindset, right? Like you, you can yeah. have a certain mood by which you look at life and the workload. How was, what decisions did you make early on? Because such a competitive school, how do you mm -hmm. decide how much you want to push, push the pedal or sort of do a cruise control? Uh, pretty much my strategy was that like first semester, I'm going to take, uh, like kind of reduce my workload, but not like take less courses, just take more manageable courses don't don't jump into like the honors physics course but take like the data science one you know and choices like that to kind of not make me jump in and just start studying I actually wanted to go out get used to the place you know uh get to know the city roam around a bit and i think the best thing you can do uh which i think i've pretty much been able to do is just be outgoing and just you know join clubs or meet as many people as you can because that's just a good strategy whenever you're you know in a new place so yeah yeah that's great to know and then you got involved other than your school academics um, and your sort of fluctuating interest between say physics computer science um, mm -hmm. you got involved in certain activities like the process engineer position mm -hmm. or research or developer Tell us more about this nano fabrication lab. What is nano fabrication, <laughs> first of all? Uh, pretty <laughs> much, uh, you know, there are processors, right? Yeah. That your phone runs on, your laptop runs on. So they are actually made by architecture on silicon wafers. So yeah, at the lab, we pretty much do research and try and work out new architectures to try and, you know, make more efficient processors or cheaper professor, like something like that, you know? And uh, it's Berkeley's research lab, Marvel Nano Lab. And yeah, I just applied there, had a few interviews, roamed around the place and yeah. So that's pretty cool. So, you know, very often uh, students are advised that at large public universities, it's hard to get such kind of jobs in the first year or it's mm -hmm. all reserved for grad students and also Berkeley seems to be doing a good job I mean students who are interested and enthusiastic can end up getting yeah. jobs in definitely. Uh, labs as well. so that's fantastic definitely so, uh, definitely yeah 
um i feel like it's like so a lot of people think that but at the same time because it's a big college there are an insane amount of opportunities so even if you feel like oh there's going to be you know a fight for everything you can just do your own thing you know mm-hmm. it's going to work out but do you think nanofab application is something you're interested in because it's kind of connected to physics quantum yeah physics, so i actually initially thought it would be more connected to computer science yeah. because i thought it would be kind of like a you know electrical engineering thing but after working there and spending like just hours in the lab and the best part is when you hear like your supervisor pretty much like consulting a researcher and telling them like you know this is how you should go about doing it and uh it's just really great is this good i enjoy it and it's a lot more physics than i thought and it's just perfect like i'm loving it so it probably propels you to uh, think about physics a lot differently right apply concepts or even try to learn things which might not be covered in classes yet uh, yeah i think one. physics is physics is just like philosophy you know it, there is no just applied but it kind of supplements everything okay so it seems like you're moving quite close towards physics then as a major but again it's early days you're into your second semester yeah i know i know uh, what are the other things you've explored i explored so for physics uh, this job is pretty much what's you know driving me and for cs i tr- i've been like working with clubs uh like passion clubs such as data good trying to you know work on projects and talk to other people and work with other people towards something which is uh fun you know it's not just like a uh, a product or studying for something you're just trying to figure out you know what happens so for example like last term i think we did a whole project on uh trying to figure out patterns in uh, pollution in the bay area and it was just really successful and i learned so much from it so the experiences like that and also with convergent which is a lot of very different in the way like it's very industry oriented i think have i'm just trying to like you know expose myself to everything and then see like build my niche you know fantastic so these are very pre professional most students end up doing them you know in the second year third year perhaps so which is fun to see <laughs> that getting opportunities and seizing them so how do you um, describe student life at berkeley the thing is like it's a huge college so it's really different for everyone i know people who just study you know all night long and they love it at the same time i know people who never study and they love it so it's not really like a set path but i would say for like technical majors it is very stressing like the workload is there definitely but you just need to like you are not going to be handed out support you have to reach out for it you know great so do you think uh uh you know being in a largish university and this question keeps coming is like most classes are really you know maybe 50 is a small size and 100s and 200s could also be a norm that's very much reality yeah mm-hmm. and so does it really impact the way you learn personally or do you want that contact like a uwc small group seminars and access to professors how do you yeah that big um, change Yeah I mean in all honesty I really do prefer small classes but I feel like it's only the CS classes <laughs> that are like 100 plus students like my physics class had I think 20 and my other like you know requirements like my philosophy econ and english classes have been like 20 to 25 people each so it's really like that experience is lacking here but for the cs classes i would say it's really mm-hmm. just there is a distance you can feel like you know all the the professors and the tas are like further away from you because the amount of you know just there's a whole social ladder of who you need to contact if you need help yeah but it's definitely doable and i know a lot of people who just prefer that they just don't need that you know 
Okay. Kind of. Great. I think uh, this is again very yeah. interesting because you know the popular majors like economics, psychology, computer science. Economics as well. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. these are places where you do have larger lecture sort of um, experiences. However, there's a plus to that too, and I'm sure you've figured yeah, out a yeah. life hack on how to sort of uh, <laughs> work the system. <laughs> Uh, what kind of, uh, you know, if you were to talk about two, three, maybe five, whatever, unique aspects of Berkeley you did not know, which students should know before they apply? Ooh, <laughs> okay. Or anything, Facts any one Berkeley, thing. right? Yeah, any, any okay. one thing else, yeah. Um, hmm. The party culture is pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. It's actually pretty vibrant. Um what else i mean see there are a lot of things that i was shocked by because i was coming from mostar which i don't know if it's shocking to other people but like for me like food is not an issue here at all it's really good and it's like any cuisine is available so don't expect that um and study wise i think it's really good academically I always thought there's like a cap to how good, you know, how good can someone teach you? How good can a professor really be? They really break those boundaries. Hmm. Um, and stuff like that. It's just like, it's an ongoing process. And still now, like every, you know, every other week, there's something new, which I find out. So, yeah. Fantastic. It's so lovely catching up and look forward to doing more such uh, sessions with you in the future. Um, so before uh, we leave, I also wanted to let our audience members know that we have panel discussions uh, at our college fair dot live uh, plat- on our platform from time to time, and we invite uh, students like Karthike to join panels on various topics. And love to call you for our physics panel at some point, and even maybe yeah, quantum computing sure. or anything else that <laughs> you'd like to talk about. So long and all the best. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>